Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the co uh, extension program, the cooperative extension program at Tennessee State University. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the cooperative extension program at Tennessee State University, the administrator of the program, uh, Dr. Clyde Chesney. And of course, Dr. Chesney, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you. It's good to be here. You know, Dr. Chesney, uh, we were somewhat confused in reference to that cooperative extension program. Uh, uh, but uh, you do represent uh, <coughs> the uh, Cooperative Extension Program, and as the administrator of the uh, Cooperative Extension Program, what we'd like to do today is to uh, talk about uh, the uh, Cooperative Extension Program, and at the same time, to uh, have you to uh, give us some of the problems that uh, you face in that program and some of the challenges. And, but before we do that, Dr. Chesney, let's have you to uh, talk about Dr. Clyde Chesney. Okay. and to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the other things that were important in leading you to the administrator of this program at Tennessee State University, and then we'll talk about other okay, things. Okay, thank you. Well, it's good to be back. I mm -hmm. think I was here in 1998, mm -hmm. my uh, first year at Tennessee State University. Uh, I came from North Carolina State. I'm a native of uh, North Carolina, and I have two degrees from North Carolina State University, and my doctorate is uh, from Michigan State University. Mm -hmm. I started in extension in 1974, so I'm starting my 29th year, if you will, mm -hmm. with Cooperative Extension. And Cooperative Extension is an organization, of course, a partnership between uh, the federal government, the state government, and the local government. And what we do in Cooperative Extension is take the information from the university out to the people across the state. And I'm uh, excited about the opportunity to serve as administrator mm -hmm. at Tennessee State University for the last uh, almost five years now. And what we have tried to do is, of course, uh, have an advisory committee to identify problems, and we develop a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, extension professors on campus and county agents in, uh, located in about 15 counties. And we develop educational programs. And I think because we're a cooperative extension, we do not provide anything other than an educational program. Mm -hmm. And we believe in helping people put knowledge to work. And of course, all our information is based on research, uh, scientific principles, and we uh, do a lot of teaching by uh, showing people how to do things so that they can learn by doing. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I have uh, enjoyed my career with Cooperative Extension. I became interested in Extension because I was in uh, conservation in undergraduate school and in graduate school. And uh, one of the Extension foresters uh, knew that I was graduating and he uh, informed me about a position. I started off as a 4-H extension specialist mm -hmm. at North Carolina A&T State University. I worked uh, nine years there. I uh, completed my doctorate at Michigan State on study leave. I worked uh, as a program leader back at North Carolina State in Raleigh. And uh, prior to coming to Tennessee, I worked mm -hmm. 15 years as a district director managing about 15 counties, uh, over 100 extension agents. Uh, in a variety of education programs. Mm -hmm. uh, in Extension, we have four primary program areas, agricultural and natural resources, mm -hmm. uh, family and consumer sciences, 4-H and youth development, and community and economic development. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what we do in terms of a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think, Dr. Chesney, when we think about uh, uh, the Extension program and we find it located on the uh, campus of the university, Nevertheless, you are there, but you reach out all over the state. Now, how do you talk about that relationship? How do you explain well, that Well, absolutely. We are a partnership. Of course, the federal part is very uh, influential in terms of funding for mm -hmm. the 1890 system. And then as 1890 university, we're mm -hmm. part of the 1890 system. And there's 17 other universities, 1890 universities. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also are part of the, the federal system in that the 1890 system is one of the units of the mm -hmm. federal system. And again, we are part of the Southern Directors uh, mm -hmm. a group. And then, uh, of course, the specialists or the extension professors belong to their professional mm -hmm. associations, so they network with other professors mm -hmm. in, that, in those categories and other programs. Mm -hmm. But I guess the, base, the basis of our program, or the strength of our program, mm -hmm. is the county extension offices. Nationwide, there's about 3,000 county extension offices. Mm -hmm. And in Tennessee, uh, we have county agents and program assistants mm -hmm and secretaries in about 15 of those county mm -hmm. offices. And if we had additional funds, we would probably uh, expand to mm -hmm. more, uh, more uh, counties. Mm -hmm. But basically, uh, the funding is federal, state, and local. And so in a county agent position, it's funded mm -hmm. partly by the county and partly by the state and federal mm -hmm. partners. Mm -hmm. And that county agent, by being located in the county, 
is, is close to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, he or she interacts very uh, mm -hmm. with people. They have advisory committees. Mm -hmm. And so we fill our, our research programs, our extension programs, mm -hmm. based on the needs of people at the mm -hmm. local level. You know, uh, Dr. Chesson, we're getting ready for the uh, first commercial break here. But uh, you mentioned uh, earlier about the 1890 institutions. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, uh, these are the historically uh, black institutions of higher education. Let's have you, when we come back, to uh, give us some kind of explanation in reference to uh, these institutions and how they came into being. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. The topic is the Cooperative Extension Program at Tennessee State University, and we're talking to Dr. Clyde Chesney. Of course, Dr. Chesney, before, Chesney, before we had our first commercial uh, break, uh, we promised that we'd give you an opportunity to talk about uh, the uh, 1890 uh, institutions. Okay. And let's have you to uh, do that now, to give our audience some idea in reference to these institutions and what they represented during the period. Okay. It's, it's important to understand the history and how we, we started. Uh, mm -hmm. When uh, the 1862 university was started, the Land Grant the Morrow Act, mm -hmm. the idea was to take education out to the common man. And at that time, most, most people were farmers, so it was basic agriculture and mechanical arts. However, in the South, as you know, with segregation, the, the African-American population could not attend those mm -hmm. institutions. So they came back with a second Morrow Act of 1890 that established the, established the historically black uh, land-grant universities. Mm -hmm. And again, the land-grant university was established primarily, the first thing was to teach. Mm -hmm. And then after the land-grant uh, organization was established, a uh, research component was added. Mm -hmm. And then extension was the last one added in, in 1914. Mm -hmm. And so the, the model has teaching on campus, research on campus, and then extending, taking the, the knowledge out to the mm -hmm. campus. So 1890, uh, came into the, the land grant system a little later than the other two. Mm -hmm. However, in terms of uh, cooperative extension, uh, we were not funded until 1972. So mm -hmm. again, we were 100 years late mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of funding. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, our funding was all federal dollars, and we uh, had to use those dollars to establish an extension program. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, the extension system, uh, when we start receiving those dollars, we, it was important for us to have a, a memorandum, if you will, with the 1862s. Mm -hmm. So in North Carolina, for example, it's North Carolina A&T and North Carolina State. Mm -hmm. They have a memorandum on cooperative extension program. Mm -hmm. In Tennessee, it's uh, Tennessee State University, and the University of Tennessee would have a memorandum. Mm -hmm. So it's a similar system in all the other uh, states that have 1890, 1862 mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. Our funding comes primarily from the federal government through USDA, uh, Department of Agriculture and the Cooperative State Research and Extension Education mm -hmm. System. Mm -hmm. uh, as a 1890 system, we have an organization called the Association of 1890 Administrators, mm -hmm. and that provides us uh, a close working relationship. Mm -hmm. We have a strategic plan. We, we work together. We develop uh, system-wide programs, and one of those programs focusing uh, on the needs of, of small mm -hmm. farmers, for example, mm -hmm. we call it Small Farmer Farm uh, mm -hmm. Assistance and Outreach mm -hmm. Program, mm -hmm. and that we can share resources, share expertise, and that allows us to take the best from each university to focus on, mm -hmm. on particular problems. Mm -hmm. uh, that program, it's a uh, small farm assistance program, our 2501 program, mm -hmm. uh, recently moved over to USDA Cooperative State Research Extension Service. And traditionally, when it started, uh, it was funded primarily, I funded primarily the 1890 program. Since then, it has expanded. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we are concerned about in terms of the, the extension administrators mm -hmm. is that it's a one-year program, and it takes uh, one-year program, and uh, the funding has been limited, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it's much more difficult for us to find staff, hire staff, train staff, and then with th without that continuity. So it mm -hmm. certainly would help mm -hmm. us if we had a, a three or four or five-year funding cycle for that program mm -hmm. so that we could establish a continuity. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, our target audience, the 1890 system, is a uh, limited resource, small farmers, mm -hmm. rural, and urban uh, low-income uh, mm -hmm. families. So again, we try to target those ordinances mm -hmm. with our different programs. Of course, in agriculture and natural resources, at Tennessee State University, we have a specialist in small farm and integrated pest management. Mm -hmm. We have a forestry specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a, um, a horticultural specialist. Mm -hmm. And we also have an animal science uh, specialist mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. And those uh, specialists or extension professors 
develop educational programs mm -hmm. that train agents to implement mm -hmm. educational mm -hmm. programs to help people mm -hmm. across the state. Mm -hmm. We also have educational programs in family consumer science, mm -hmm. and we have nutrition, uh, health and food safety as one area, and family life as another area. Mm -hmm. And then in the area of uh, community resource and economic development, we have a small business uh, um, specialist that works with small mm -hmm. business and also uh, mm -hmm. community leadership development. Mm -hmm. And then one of the other specialists in CRD works with, uh, we call it a land ownership information project. Mm -hmm. And what he's trying to do is divide mm -hmm. educational program mm -hmm. to landowners to help them understand their rights and responsibilities mm -hmm. of land ownership. So he also works with small farmers, mm -hmm. but also just helping people understand their rights and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. For example, much of the, uh, historically much of the land has been lost from, uh, say, black mm -hmm. farmers mm -hmm. due to the lack of will. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no, um, uh, a proper way of, of transferring it to the next generation mm -hmm. of, of lack, lack of paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Our uh, forestry specialist, of course, is working with landowners to mm -hmm. uh, plant trees and manage their, their timberland mm -hmm. holding. And then our uh, small farm sp uh, specialist, mm -hmm. state professor, uh, works with farmers in terms of alternative crops, uh, mm -hmm. um, sustainable agriculture, if you will. Good. And, 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 and of course, I think what, what you're saying here, uh, as we make preparations for the next couple of minutes, uh, Dr. Chesney, uh, is that uh, through your program, you're able to almost touch every aspect of uh, the state, of the uh, various uh, constituencies in the state. I mean, uh, absolutely. You can touch business and the whole, whole aspect of it. Absolutely. Now, if you look at it uh, from that perspective, what do you think that uh, uh, could happen in terms of your resources? If you were, were given more resources, what could you possibly do? Uh, uh, where are, do you feel that you're weak in resources? We've got about two minutes. Okay. Weak in resources, you need assistance. Well, right now, Tennessee has four districts, and, and right now we have agents in three districts. We would mm -hmm. like to have agents in uh, all four districts, mm -hmm. probably 25, 30 counties with cost share funding, mm -hmm. and of course, the support for them. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our funds, probably 80, 85 percent, comes from federal government. Mm -hmm. And the, the federal government uh, is going to a system of competitive grants. Mm -hmm. And part of the competitive grants is having non-federal matching dollars that mm -hmm. have to come from state or county mm -hmm. or private sector. Mm -hmm. And 1890s are facing mm -hmm. uh, the problem of obtaining those mm -hmm. non-federal mm -hmm. matching dollars. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as more and more dollars become competitive in terms of the federal mm -hmm. level, we just need more support Mm -hmm. from the from the state in order to match those federal mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. But we are very um, innovative. We, we write contracts and grants. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, in Tennessee and other states, the, the county call share mm -hmm. has chipped in and uh, has helped us to meet mm -hmm. that match. But again, we could do more with more funds mm -hmm. to, for more resources, more educational And programs. so you think that if, if there was some way to uh, deal with this whole idea of competitive uh, grants, that it would uh, uh, more resources could come in to uh, your organization uh, through those. Absolutely, and, and part of the, the thing is, is having the state uh, provide uh, uh, additional, additional, additional revenue. Right, revenue. Very good, and, and, yeah. and of course, yeah. uh, that's essentially what we wanted to uh, mm -hmm. hear from you, that mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, uh, the uh, uh, whole staff and the whole organization is already there in place, ready to do things, but <coughs> you find that uh, now since th there's been a change, in terms of how you receive your money, mm -hmm. and now you have to compete with uh, larger institutions that are more endowed and et cetera, and, so, and, 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 and you just don't have those resources. Yeah, it's, it's a very aggressive environment now for, for mm -hmm. resource development, and of course our appropriate dollars will only go so far and mm -hmm. are very limited. Very good. Mm -hmm. And of course, let us take this uh, second commercial break, in which we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to this final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Clyde Chesney and the topic is the extension program, cooperative extension program at Tennessee State University. Uh, Dr. Chesney, let's see if over this last uh, few minutes that we have here, let's see if we can give you an opportunity to talk about some of the other things that are of uh, some importance in terms of uh, trying to bring more resources into the uh, cooperative extension program and some of the other programs that you have okay. that we've not given you an opportunity to talk about. Let's talk about it. Okay, I would be amiss if I did not mention our 4-H Youth and Development Program. Mm -hmm. And when I started as an as a extension specialist many, many years ago, the, the concept was that every subject matter specialist needed to teach their subject matter to young people. Mm -hmm. And we do that through our 4-H Youth and Development Program. Mm -hmm. and our program focusing on, again, limited resource clientele group. 
Uh, but we also have received uh, additional federal support mm -hmm. uh, in the way of facilities funds, and uh, we get a five-year funding cycle of funding. Mm -hmm. And those funding ha has allowed the 1890s to augment their resources, their mm -hmm. facilities to do more education, teaching, and research. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, was fortunate in terms of our 1992 funding cycle to acquire a 124-acre farm in Cheatham County. Mm -hmm. We're calling it the TSU Research and Extension Demonstration Farm. Mm -hmm. And the focus is on sustainable agriculture and applied research that will help mm -hmm. small farms. Mm -hmm. For example, we have um, uh, demonstrations on vegetables, mm -hmm. organic mm -hmm. production, um, uh, agroforestry, mm -hmm. and we plan to uh, have some demonstrations on uh, um, aquaculture mm -hmm. and uh, production in post-harvest handling. Mm -hmm. the, the key to our program that we try to serve farmers, we call them a risk management education program. Mm -hmm. When we talk about production, we talk about marketing, mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, selecting crops, uh, managing your, your mm -hmm. uh, budget, land ownership, mm -hmm. and gives them a comprehensive understanding of what they need to do in order to survive in this, this time. Mm -hmm. So again, we are allowed to do that. Secondly, uh, we have another research facilities program mm -hmm. that we are developing a distant education center because much of mm -hmm. the information can come from mm -hmm. any place now, from other 1890 universities. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the process of starting construction on that distant mm -hmm. education center. Mm -hmm. We call it an Agricultural Information and Technology mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. And that will allow us to provide information mm -hmm. Uh, via computers and the web mm -hmm. and uh, uh, mm -hmm. te television mm -hmm. to our agents and to our uh, volunteers across the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we can uh, deliver a program from Nashville that would go to Jackson, mm -hmm. that could go to Memphis, or could go to um, uh, mm -hmm. the Cumberland District. Mm -hmm. So those facility funds have allowed us to augment our facilities mm -hmm. and allowed us to do a better job provide an educational program to the people across mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Dr. Chesney, when you think in terms of uh, the assistance that uh, you are now given to uh, the uh, small uh, farmer, and especially mm -hmm. the uh, small African-American farmer, what can be done in, 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 in terms of trying to increase your ability to uh, reach a larger segment and, 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 of course, something to do something in terms of stopping the uh, tremendous decline that we're experiencing in terms of the loss of land that many of these uh, individuals are suffering? Well, going back to our risk management curriculum, we feel it's important for, for a landowner or farmer to understand mm -hmm. um, from, I guess, uh, the production issue, but mm -hmm. also the marketing and management issues. Mm -hmm. And many times, um, small farmers might be strong in production, but the management issues. Mm -hmm. And so with the Small Farm Assistance Program, we have been able to employ two full-time farm management specialists mm -hmm. and three part-time specialists. And they are able to work very closely with those farmers in terms of their, their budgeting and their financing. Mm -hmm. And also with our subject matter specialists, we have been able to give them uh, ideas for crops, ideas for demonstration, mm -hmm. so they will make it uh, mm -hmm. attractive for them. A small farmer cannot compete with, with large farmers, mm -hmm. but there are some niches that they can be very successful mm -hmm. in. But they have to approach it a as a business. They have to keep better records. Mm -hmm. They have to be uh, almost... Uh, much more aggressive, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so what we've been trying to do with this program is provide education, also mm -hmm. help them understand how the system works, mm -hmm. uh, where to go for loans and support, mm -hmm. um, how to write contracts and mm -hmm. this type of thing. So with the Small Farm Assistance Program, again, I mentioned it earlier, mm -hmm. it's on a one-year funding cycle and the fundings have mm -hmm. been restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't give us the, the continuity that we need to continue mm -hmm. to provide that service mm -hmm. for the, the mm -hmm. small farmers. Mm -hmm. But again, we have uh, outstanding people, mm -hmm. uh, dedicated people mm -hmm. that are committed to, to uh, mm -hmm. going out and working mm -hmm. with farmers where they are. Mm -hmm. And our motto in extension has always been to start where the, the, the uh, mm -hmm. individual, where the farmer, or the farmer mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and, and to work with them from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. One of the, the most successful efforts has been um, a system of demonstrations. We mm -hmm. had a uh, for example, a couple of years ago, a sweet potato demonstration in Tipton County. And uh, uh, we actually had several varieties. And then we have a field day at the end of summer. The farmers come in, mm -hmm. and the, the extension professor could explain, mm -hmm. this is what we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the procedures. And here's, if you did, if you implement these pr production mm -hmm. practices, here's the, uh, out, like the outcome. Mm -hmm. So we feel strongly in terms of, of showing by doing uh, mm -hmm. the demonstration. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, we have some uh, 
demonstrations now in agroforestry mm -hmm. around the state as well on our, mm -hmm. our research and extension demonstration mm -hmm. farm. So again, we, we feel strongly about the outreach of, of the mm -hmm. university to those farmers. Mm -hmm. And many times the issue is not just one particular issue, but it may be a very complex issue mm -hmm. involving uh, I think land ownership, mm -hmm. that involve uh, uh, markets, lack of markets, mm -hmm. or lack of know-how, or lack, lack of understanding mm -hmm. how the system works. Mm -hmm. So I think the, our agents and our extension professor with the sensitivity mm -hmm. to his clientele group mm -hmm. are able to go in as, as uh, mm -hmm. uh, establish a relationship with mm -hmm. the farmers mm -hmm. and their families uh, the knowledge of the community and help provide mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. that meet their needs. And it's almost you, you start where the farmer uh, is located in terms of their situation mm -hmm. and help them develop a plan and then you mm -hmm. work with them over a mm -hmm. period of time. Mm -hmm. And so it's not an overnight uh, uh, change, mm -hmm. but we feel that it's developing relationships mm -hmm. and once you gain the confidence of that farmer uh, and start teaching the, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, research-based information to that farmer, mm -hmm we can help them move forward. Again, mm -hmm. uh, it's understanding some of the issues, the, the um, parameters out there, and mm -hmm. really helping them know that there is a resource uh, there. Mm -hmm. Now, the extension service and the research, cooperative research service has mm -hmm. been here, but many times people uh, don't know about us or they feel, well, I don't have enough land mm -hmm. or uh, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is again to reach out, uh, publicize our program, and make contact. Uh, we would like for farmers to be involved with group learning and group mm -hmm. teaching, but many times mm -hmm. it takes an effort, a one-on-one, -on -one mm -hmm. where that uh, extension specialist uh, is going to the farm and talking to that farmer in his field or around the kitchen table and, and sharing with them and then gaining mm -hmm. the confidence and then and bringing them into mm -hmm. ongoing educational programs. Mm -hmm. But we've worked very closely with the University of Tennessee. Our agents are located in the the county extension offices, mm -hmm. uh, they are supervised at that level by the county extension director. Mm -hmm. It's a cooperative effort. I think we're all committed to uh, mm -hmm. responding to the needs of, of farmers. And I think as um, the number of farms decline, and it has declined, mm -hmm. um, I think um, the general public will start to appreciate uh, what it means to have mm -hmm. uh, farmers uh, living in the rural community. Mm -hmm. Because they, they of course, produce uh, crops and mm -hmm. food, but they also Mm -hmm. add to the fabric of, of rural mm -hmm. America, rural Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the South and Tennessee, North Carolina would not be the South without, without farmers, farmers and mm -hmm. uh, their land holding. So mm -hmm. again, we feel like it's an important job that we do. And mm -hmm. with additional funds, we could do more. Good. And, 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 and so, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Chesney, uh, would, would, uh, uh, fair, would it be fair to make a statement that, as you've indicated, that this, uh, the farmer now has become a businessman? and that uh, in order for him to thrive, he has to uh, understand uh, all of those issues that generally deal with business. Absolutely. Uh, would Absolutely. that be fair? That's and correct. it really doesn't matter whether he's an African-American farmer or but a small farmer, he will meet essentially the same competition. Yes. But you would be uh, better off uh, if you were able to get the resources that are necessary in order to have him to understand that and to move in that direction. Yes. It, would, would that be a fair assessment Ab in terms of how Absolutely. you see? It's a global uh, world now, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, we are looking at every area uh, opportunity we can to mm -hmm. help advance mm -hmm. uh, the plight mm -hmm. of small farmers. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Chester, let, let me uh, thank you over the last half minute that we have here for coming by and giving us that excellent information about uh, the uh, Cooperative Extension Program as well as the 1890 uh, Land Grant Institutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think as you indicated that uh, it's very, very important that people become aware of, of what these uh, organizations are doing within the framework of the university. And of course, uh, let me uh, also encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.